welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I got really excited today because somebody messaged me and said, hey, would you be able to help me do this? And shot me a video of a jellyfish pour. I'm like, jellyfish? Ooh, I like jellyfish. They're so pretty. And I thought, you know what? I watched the video and I'm like, this doesn't look that hard. I just thought I'd do it first time and I'd film while I was doing it. Mistakes and all. We'll see how it works and we're gonna have some fun. So you're gonna have the advantage of knowing how it turned out. See, right here, that's how it turned out. But me, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> so um, the only thing I don't have is to do this technique is chain. But I make some jewelry and so I have these little leather strings. So I'm just gonna cut the little ends off because these are green. And I mean, who wants a necklace with a green string? You tell me, I, I, except they can't find my scissors, of course. They run away, I swear they have legs. Found them. Off come the ends. One string, two strings. Now, first thing I usually do when I'm pouring at all is to put tacks in the bottom of the canvas. My tacks. Okay. Now it's important that there that the canvas sits level for any time you're doing a fluid pour. So I try and get the tacks all in evenly and level. The next thing I do is make sure the canvas is 100% level or as close as I can get it. It's funny, I know my table is level, but sometimes the canvases still aren't. Probably depends on how the tacks are pushed in. If they're pushed in really level and straight, it's cool. And if they're pushed in kind of wonky, sometimes it can throw off the level. But in this case, we're good to go. I have pre-mixed white with um, two-thirds Floetrol, one-third white. That's just my standard mix. I'll see with this technique. Maybe it's be too thin. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to top this up. That wasn't me, I swear. So now that I added more paint to this, I have to add more Floetrol. It's roughly two thirds Floetrol. I don't measure. Anyone who knows me probably is not surprised by that. But I need to crack open another jug. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, better fit, better. Do this first. <laughs> I know this is going to create bubbles, but if you don't shake it, there's usually clear stuff on the top that doesn't look like nice, not smooth. So for colors today, since it was, I'm just trying a new thing and I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm just going to grab paints that I have leftover. So just use leftover stuff. I have a lot of teal. This is like full. So I'm going to absolutely use teal. It is my favorite color. I have some nice phthalo blue. Very pretty. I have some hot pink. I don't know if you can see the color of that. It looks white in my video. Weird. But it's hot pink. Hey, do I have purple? So that's two shades of pink. So that might be good to have two shades to have two shades of pink, not just my sweater. <laughs> so yeah, pink and pink and blue and teal and gold. Maybe I won't use the gold. It feels like gold is kind of a warmer color and these are kind of, I don't know, cooler ish other than the hot pink. So now that I know what colors I'm using and I've got my base color, we can get started. As I said before, time to create some magic. 
my tagline in my business, by the way, is that the magic happens when you let go. And it's one of the reasons I like pouring because you have to let go when you're pouring because it's hard to control and predict. All right, here we go. Woo! Gloves, almost forgot gloves. Good thing they went the right way. I just threw my gloves in where the paint was. Ah, it was silly. Oh, well. It's not like I'm not going to get paint on me anyway. There we go. So I'm just going to tilt the paint around first. I go all the way almost to the one corner. Then almost to the other corner. And I can already tell I don't have enough paint because I like it. To, I'm not pa I'm not a patient woman, so I like it to flow a little quicker. I don't like waiting for things. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oop. Before it goes off. Now I'm going to go to this corner. Hmm. And then this corner. All right, it's going to start going off the edge. So I'm going to take a little tool that I found. It's probably used for cake decorating. It's flexible. I have no idea what it's called, but it kind of looks like that. It's very thin, and I like to use it to drag the paint around the canvas. All right, because we want that paint to cover all the way to the edge and over the edge like with any kind of fluid pouring you have to get the whole thing saturated in paint i drag it to the edge and then i do that and it kind of goes over the edge you'll see many different methods of getting the first layer down this is the most impatient one you'll see so like i say i just you got to get it like relatively level, of course. Then I just run my finger along the side a little bit to make sure every edge, each edge is coated. And then I'm going to tilt a little bit. Forgive me, but I might fast forward this part a little bit because I literally have to tilt it and then wait and then tilt it the other way and then wait and then tilt it the other way and then wait. Then I literally drop the canvas onto my table and let it fall crash crash helps it level up level out a little bit then i can kind of i see any bare spots i'll just sort of put my hand in some of the paint and make sure there's no bare areas now i'm going to take a heat gun to get rid of the bubbles in the base layer One sec. first i'm going to wipe my hands so that my gloves aren't so yucky you know, yucky. Yucky is a word. I like the word yucky. Yucky, 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 yucky. Now, in the video, they used pipettes to put the paint on because you can do it a little more in a controlled way. If you're just pouring from a cup, you get a lot of paint. And for, for jellyfish, apparently, you don't want a lot of paint. So I'm going to try and do as I'm told. That's always a little tricky for me. Just saying. So I'm going to open the lids, take the lids off of each color. Oh, this teal is really full. Now I think the teal is a bit metallic or color shifting, but I can't really be sure because it's um, been a little while since I put it in there. So. I don't know if I like that color actually. Hmm. It's almost a burgundy. I do not like. So this is getting close to the end. So I'm actually going to put 
just pour my flow troll directly into this jar. And okay, shake, 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 shake your paint jar, shake your paint jar. Oh, shake, 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 shake your paint jar, shake your paint jar. Okay, beer does funny things to me. I have to, I have to admit, that well, should be good. Yeah, that is a much nicer shade of pink. Okay, pipettes. So I got these on Amazon. I'll show you there. I actually find it annoying that they come in little individual packages because I have to always find my scissors and cut the top off because that plastic seems to not be terrible. Not tear ible, tear able. There we go. And I I think the pipettes can double as stirrers, stir sticks. Now all of these feel a little, a little thick. Don't want to even go up the pipette. So I think I'm going to put a little distilled, distilled water in each of the colors and stir it in just because I don't want it, the paint too thick. I know all of these colors already had Floetrol mixed in, so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to get them a little thinner. So with most types of pouring, I always add two thirds Floetrol and a little water to the paint. Now, and I often do use, um, that's full. I do use mostly liquid paints rather than tube paints for pouring, just because it, you have to add less stuff to make them liquidy. So, you know, I might cut some of this stuff because I feel like watching someone stir paint is kind of similar to watching paint dry. <laughs> it's kind of boring. Okay, so jellyfish are kind of this shape, kind of like almost a mushroom, mushroom top. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do the mushroom top in the darkest color, which is my blue, followed maybe closely by that dark pink. So let's just take some blue. So I'm going to like sort of scrape it on all sides of the pipette. So there's no excess paint on the sides of the pipette. And then I'm going to do okay, I was touching the weight a little too much. Maybe I'll take one of the lighter colors, in this case the turquoise or teal. And if you know me too, you know um, I'm not one to want things to look hyper realistic, which of course you're not going to get in pouring anyway. But so I'm not going to be too awfully careful. I'm not even going to do every color all the way. Oops, wrong one. Okay. And yeah, I might put more of this. I like a lot of teal because teal says underwater creature to me somehow. 
because uh, I guess it's the color of the sea. So one of the things that I won't really know until I do it at least once is how much paint is too much paint versus not enough. And you notice I'm not putting everything everywhere. I'm just kind of choosing my moments. That's probably enough of those for that, for this part. I'm just going to put my paint a little farther away so I don't mess it up. Now we get to play with the straw. Not so we can drink beer. <laughs> straw. Now, you want um, not a huge straw, not a dinky dinky, one of those little fine, fine ones either. Just an average size straw like that. <laughs> and then you're going to blow this way because the tendrils are going to fall this way. And this is the first time I've ever done this, so be nice. So I kind of like the way it's roughed up and not too, not too perfect. I just want a little bit more wispy ends. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to use a hot heat gun on it again just to make sure there's no bubbles. Hang on. All right. Now, the next step is to make the strings covered in paint for some of the tendrils. So hopefully you can see this. I'll try and I'll try not to put my hands in the way, but I'm just going to make a couple strings. different colors. Now, 
time to take the string and just put it in the paint. Now, this is what I don't know. I guess you have to kind of roll it around. and yeah, that works. Just kind of give it a little twist and it rolls around in the paint. Looks really cool. We're getting very sleepy. <laughs> okay, so what they did is they kind of put it down and waved it a little bit and then pulled straight up. And then the second one. Okay, wipe it off. Now, I'm going to do maybe four of these. I saw one where they just used a single color, but I liked the multicolor. It just looks so cool. Maybe I'll make a shorter one. This one can be a little bit longer. I think if I do any more, it'll be a little too much. But isn't that cool? I love it. Um, I don't know why that's there. I guess it just drips over. Okay, I might have to fix that. <sighs> Live and learn. Live and learn. All right. I'll fix that right now. <laughs> that works. Yeah, come here. I'll just... Oops, that didn't work. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> okay. This is what happens when you film something you've never done before. You make a mistake. It's all good. So in that top part, if I decide I don't like it, um, I'll just, the bubbles, I'll just paint it over with white when it's dry to clean it up a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to take the straw again just to kind of, look like I also noticed with a jellyfish there's not just those funky things in the middle there's there's straight lines around the edges I think best way to do that is with pipettes again popping a couple bubbles there and or one thing I really like to use is my stylus. I wonder if I could just drag some straight lines. So with a stylus, you want to grab the color you want to extend. And just do that. Now, after every stroke, you have to wipe your stylus off.
it's not my best work. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of white on these two lines just for fun. Fun and funkadunk. Maybe a little more blue. And I'm going to do a couple more pulls with the string because I love those and there's not many of them. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to save this piece, but it might. One. Oh, so it's the same string, so why not? like those I want more of them more 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 the other thing that I don't love is I uh, Come on, Blue, go up in the stylus. I mean, go up in the pipe pack. Come on. I like a little bit of that solid blue. Well, I didn't work. Actually, I like those tendrils done like that. I am experimenting apparently at this point, so that's okay. I found that there wasn't a lot of this deep pink, and I kind of like this deep pink. So I'm just going to add some more. I'm kind of tempted to use a blow dryer at this point, but I won't because I think I might really wreck something. <laughs> I've been known to do that a few times. All right. And straw, where'd you go? There you are. Okay. Make that line a bit. I'm not liking the, the whole jellyfish part. <laughs> oh, man. So I think what's bugging me about it, compositionally speaking, is I find the jellyfish kind of busy. Maybe I use too many colors. Maybe that's it. But I'm going to take this handy to anything you saw me use before. Love it. And it's clean now. And I'm going to try and swipe because this is an experiment. I just feel like that whole thing is kind of like busy. I told you it was an experiment. <laughs>
That's better. I needed the jellyfish part to look a little more defined and then a little less defined on that bottom, on the bottom, but more defined around the top. There's so many things, things you can do. <laughs> I'm just being silly now. I have to say, I was so excited to try this, and I'm finding the actually end result like a little underwhelming. Let's just put it that way. I mean, it kind of looks like a jellyfish. The more I do with it, the worse it's looking. I'm going to do part of it is I wish my strings were a little bit longer. Yeah, I needed a little more of those things. Okay, let's try that. Let me know in the comments what you guys would do different if anything and what you think I'm doing wrong that I really shouldn't be doing that helps I really liked that I needed more of those well maybe that's what it is okay so my iPad storage is full <laughs> so here we go <laughs> It's not bad. Hmm. Maybe I needed more dark colors. I will try it again. And we'll see what happens. But so far, it's it's not the worst thing I've ever painted. <laughs> it's like, oh man. I still feel like I want distinct colors, so you know. Those distinct lines. I'm gonna mess it up right there. Make it make sense in the composition. I don't know. I'm gonna call this partly a failed experiment, but there's parts, there's things about it I like. I think this is just too much, too big. I wanted this to be more of a feature and this to be less. I think that's the main thing that's bothering me. But let me know in the comments what you think, how failed an experiment you think this is, and I will see you next time. Peace and love, and please continue to make magic and create lots. Bye-bye.